Hey there, fellow makers. I am Pruitt. This is Jim Davis. And sometimes you think so hard on whether or not you could make some type of character, you never stop to think if you should. So why don't we build some artificer concepts together today on WebDM? Okay, Jim. Let's uh, let's go ahead and uh, craft an episode on artificer concepts, mm -hmm. shall yeah. we? Uh, the make the makers of the world, as it were. What? Um, <laughs> uh, first, first off, what uh, to, for you? What is the what's the what part of the artificer, whether it's mechanics theme or whatever, do you find yeah. the most engaging when it comes to like conceptualizing them? Like as far as like the thing that you want to bring up concepts for is because of this mechanic or this thing. What what do you right, what? Right. I to me it is the inherent magic in creation itself. Right. Like, I mean, mm -hmm. in, in many ways, you just think real life, not even talking about pretend elf games, um, you know, the act of creating something has a magical quality to it, especially if you don't know how that thing is made, you know, right? Mm -hmm. Like it literally is magic because you don't know you can trust that there is a process you could learn. But until you know, then, you know, it's it's might as well be magic uh <laughs> and in, in the broadest sense uh, uh possible and so like i like that idea of taking it to a kind of fantasy extreme by by heightening the the process of creation and and the imbuing of something with magic power simply through making it through crafting it uh, and that's that's the biggest appeal that a that an artificer has to me. It's it's not the on demand magic items that that D and D artificers get, uh, or you know the ability to 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 make a bunch of game breaking stuff uh, for you know other systems that have comparable uh, uh, concepts and character options. It's like that my character does something, uh, especially if they're working with like mundane tools like the tools and materials they're using are non-magical. And then the act of creation makes them magical. Like that's, yeah. that's really what I like at the heart of the artificer. Um, and, and what appeals to me about the concept. Yeah. You like the, uh, the MacGyver esque nature of taking <laughs> seemingly random mundane <laughs> items and making something work from it right right <laughs> but it's it's that it encompasses that and then at the other end of the spectrum is like the ring smiths from from middle earth right like remember the first times yeah, i sort of yeah. read the story and and sort of get the lore behind the one ring and then the others and i kept looking for like all right when are they casting a spell right but you know when when are they actually doing the magic you know and mm -hmm. the way it's presented is just like it's magical because that they did it that they that they poured their will right like that they created this thing with intent and purpose and and that it's the events surrounding it that imbue it with magic um mm -hmm. you know and and then also the i could take some things that nobody knows about and i understand the mystical properties they have and can unlock the magic uh is, is sort of a close uh, cousin to that but yeah yeah definitely yeah, most of. All right, well, let's start uh, running down some of these concepts here and uh, talking through them here. Uh, let's do it. First, um, uh, if you're going to be an artificer, you're going to need to know things, and to know things, you got to go places. So mm -hmm. the explorer, like yeah. the, the 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 field researcher, like uh, what about that uh, excites you? This concept really builds on the idea that in a D and D world, there is a background supernatural force that is at work and and i think this is best expressed in eberron like eberron does the most to like take this thing seriously assume that there is a, a, a fundamental force to the universe that is supernatural and and that is where magic comes from and there is a you know it can be studied scientifically because it is replicable and behaves according to certain laws and things like that and and so in that sense a, a character that kind of fits in that world building or worldview is one that just knows all of the ways in which the objects and things in the world, the plants, the animals, the, the various minerals and chemicals and the like of the world have magic power. 
And so Mm -hmm. like wherever they go, whatever they do, they're able to like, oh, I I can take this thing and mix it with this. And if I, you know, put it in this solution and wait a minute, you know, this is what'll happen. They're just, they're a, you know, what what you might call in another setting or game, like a, a, a natural chemist. They just sort of know how things work, mm-hmm. how to create certain reactions and bring out certain qualities. And I think it fits with the artificer concept really well because they are about imbuing magic in items. And so you can have a sort of rough and tumble character that's used to going out in the wilds. Maybe they they have a, take a, a page from a ranger or some other outdoor explorer uh, and, and sort of flavor it, but they're, they're comfortable in wild places and they have an understanding of the magic that is inherent in them and how to make things out of that. And really there's a real mm-hmm. appeal uh, uh, for me there. Oh yeah, most definitely. Uh, making the most out of what you got is uh, is key, uh, especially when it comes to your games. So go on over to Patreon and for five bucks a month, you get four podcasts a month. So that's making the most out of a good investment. So you should try that. Uh, now, moving on. Our next concept is uh, in my head. I can't not think of what we do in the shadows and Laszlo Cravensworth. Uh, <laughs> just a regular human magician. Just, just a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah but, but what about a an artificer just guising themselves it's just a, they're just like a, a wizard like anyone else like right. what's yeah. the difference right what's the difference in, in, in dungeons and dragons especially but in, in traditional fantasy there's often physical objects that are needed to cast spells to produce magic you you know you need a wand or you need spell components you have to have a crystal ball to do scrying you know there's all sorts of things you do with potions and the like and and to me the mechanical underpinnings of a character concept are one thing, how it is expressed in the world, how, how people relate to them, how they identify in, in, you know, their, their place in society is another matter entirely. There's really nothing saying like take an artificer and just call them a magician, call them a wizard, right? They need a wand to, to cast their, uh, you know, fire magic, just like anyone else. They create potions just like anyone else. They use, magic mirrors and scrying crystals and all sorts of magical things. And and I think that like it works well from both like a mechanical level. We're thinking about like the fifth edition artificer, maybe just a fun reflavoring of that, uh, of, of those mechanics. Um, but it also like appeals to me in a lot of different systems, uh, not just Dungeons and Dragons, because it's like, they literally are a wizard. They know things that others don't. They're a, they they have mm-hmm. techniques. They know secrets. They have this power that comes from their knowledge, and that knowledge is, is of how to bring out uh, sort of the magic in in uh, in objects, but how to imbue it in objects, how to channel it. It's kind of an extension of the the sort of the uh, field researcher alchemist type, but more refined and and made more fantasy. Um, mm-hmm. I just think of like that that image of a wizard like by themselves in, in a dusty laboratory with like all kinds of beakers and, and experiments going on and like a big shelf with like a jar of spell components, uh, you know, uh, you know, filling up the shelves and like that could just as easily be an artificer as it could a wizard in terms of the class uh, that I pick. And mm-hmm. I, I like, I don't know. I just, there's something about that that really appeals to me and, and like in a classic sense of like, the fantasy of my youth that was, uh, you know, it kind of recalls to mind that. Mm-hmm. Oh um, yeah, most definitely. Um, <clears throat> uh, the next one is, is, is one that I, I kind of love because the, uh, the idea of like trying to recreate your image some other way or something like that, but like a, uh-huh. like a golem, a, a, a golemist, someone sure. who creates, you know, automaton or whatever you want to call it, you know, flesh golems, cl- however it is. But like mm-hmm. the idea of uh, somebody who's like, no, 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 I want to perfect this image uh, yeah. and I want to recreate it as many times as possible and make it more, make my creations more perfect. And yeah. um, just the, there's something about the focus of it since, since artificer and what they create are kind of all over the place, but I love the focus of it in that all those individual pieces, you're just trying to recreate that part of your golem. The boots that you make are just the feet (laughs) part, you know, like the, 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 when you make some armor, like a chest piece, uh, like a breastplate or something, no, no, you're just creating the torso. You're just making that part more perfect. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. Something about it just speaks to me. I, yeah. I, I, the idea of a, of a character who's like in the process of making a masterpiece, right? Like yeah. that, that they are, they are engaged in a project that is greater than the span of their levels or, or perhaps even the, the time we'll spend with them while they're an, an adventurer and that it's mm-hmm. the, the like gaining the skills needed to, to create that masterpiece, the, the process of, of like painstakingly crafting this thing, every intricate part of it and, and going through different versions of it till it's just right you know, and, and, and that in and of itself is a process of perfection or development for the character themselves as they create this thing. Like, mm-hmm. like it, it'd be like in the, in a more action oriented version of D and D, like it, it'd be more about flavor and presentation and, and like how I conceived of the character necessarily than like skill set mm-hmm. and class abilities and the like, but it doesn't necessarily yeah. have to be like, you can merge those two but definitely something that's more than like, Oh, I create this little like turret a, a thing or like a little steel beat em up thing, like a, a fighting robot. Like I want something that's like, this is a work of art. It's beautiful. Mm-hmm. And, and it's also like a, a, a construct or, or some sort of magical creation that is very complicated, very, um, you know, very wonderful in its uh, in its very existence and is it just like a crude mm-hmm. fighting ability uh but something else entirely like that's where that's really what the golemist is for me oh definitely and what i love about it is like iron man is a is a is a usual suspect when it comes to referencing artificers but when you really look at like especially like by iron man 3 like that's what he is he's a golemist he's like creating different sure. versions of the same thing for different situations, but eventually it leads, you know, I mean, he's looking for like a, a perfect suit, uh, which he eventually finds, but right, I don't know. Right. I, just, uh, <laughs> I, I, I just, I, it, I, I it, love that though. It works for all sorts of constructs, I think. And, mm-hmm. and like, you could do the more like clockwork, uh, mechanical types. And maybe you've got like a, uh, uh, you know, like those scenes from the end of uh, Blade Runner, you know, where it's just all these wonderful toys and automaton that are, that are, you know, sort of tragic and beautiful and, uh, and like, or, or you could do something that's more like grotesque or horror oriented and have it be more like, is this a necromancer or is this uh what, what's going on here with all these bodies? The Slavic that- flex crafter. <laughs> right. <So>. Yes. <laughs> Vivamancer. <laughs> oh, that's a nice segue, sir. Way to way, way to build it in there. Way to, yeah, uh, way to set you up. Because because that because the next one is is the Vivamancer that which um I don't know it's, it's something about it just makes me makes my skin crawl a little bit. Yeah. When you think about like Vivamancy and like the how awful that could go. It starts sure. very innocently with like oh yeah. you can use these alterations to make yourself a little better and then oh, in the yeah. end you're not even you're not whatever you were you're not human anymore <laughs> <laughs> you, no no um so yeah so i like a lot of body horror in my dungeons and dragons i i you know there's a, all different ways throughout dd's history that your character can get mangled and and burned and melted and petrified and so there's already that sort of body horror element baked into it and i just like sort of ramping it up uh, and the like and and part of it for me is sort of you know there's a world in which all sorts of magical creatures run around that presumably they have parts of their biologies which are magical in and of themselves that produce magical effects from you know just the 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 natural processes that they have i mean that's what happens in a wizard's brain right like that's what happens in a spellcaster's mind is that they produce magic from mundane stuff. And yeah. like the idea that you can take those creatures and remove those organs and then start implanting them in yourself or someone else that you can create like living symbiotes and, and that you're a crafter just as much as a metal worker or a carpenter or whatever. It's just your medium is flesh and bone. Um, I really like it. Like it really appeals to me. Uh, because it's creepy, it's weird, it's it's uh, clearly screams something is wrong, um, 
and then you get to do all kinds of gross out things for your uh, Dungeons and Dragons group that uh, they then you know despise you for, and and uh, it's, it's yeah. wonderful times, great motivation uh, for uh, for DMs out there. <laughs> Doctor so, Frankenstein's like, are gonna Frankenstein. I mean, that's yeah. just that's what they're gonna oh, do, yeah. right? Like, so. uh-huh. oh yeah, <laughs> it's just what's. Uh, right <laughs> whether it's yeah whether it's a uh, sort of a dr frankenstein type or like a more like a xenomorph uh thing going on whether you know somebody has to make all those owl bears somebody has to make all those mm-hmm. chimeras somebody has to turn all of the uh you know whatever <laughs> whatever unfortunate people into monsters somehow um mm-hmm. and i yeah, think where those hippogriffs D- come from exactly right where the hippogriffs come from and I think in like a D and D world, you the can right also music. S- no, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, think you, I think you can see. Um, I think you can see people doing this to themselves voluntarily. Like this will make you a better, you know, sorcerer. This will make you a better warrior. Just put this magic organ in here. Let me implant this in you. Yeah, it can mm-hmm. be very fun and lends itself well to oh, the artificer. Oh. Oh my God! Uh, don't even get me started on on the vivamancy of like instead of like a, a tome of exercise and health, it's like no, uh, I'm gonna implant this extra set of lungs and this extra liver, and yeah. you get a plus two to con, you know, yeah. as you can hold your breath longer and you can process things better. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, getting getting extra organs is just another way to bo- boost your stats. It could be as simple as just like yeah, you get a plus one dex because you right. uh, you got longer you got longer muscles, so you you're more limber and dexterous. Yeah, um, certainly. Anyway, certainly. a lot of ways to express it. No, that's uh, that's a that's a good one. Uh, the next one is uh, is a I think the more common uh, uh, a more common use uh, in 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 artificer. It it it's again bringing back around to like Iron Man. I think a little mm-hmm. bit, but like the artisan savant. Like you yeah. just you you are the top of your craft. Like right. you are the you, you like the things that you're making are so far ahead of everyone looks at you and you're like, like where the hell did that come from? What yeah, is that? Yeah, yeah. Like oh, I yeah, just no, I had a dream about copying it last you night. afterwards. Yeah, you had a, you learned it yeah. in a dream. Yeah, who, who knows where you got the idea for that? Yeah, it to me the artisan servant concept touches on a lot of of, of different conceptual space, uh, which is why I, I I like it so much for a character. Especially if you've got an artificer that's not like a front line, like a like a battlesmith kind of type, but is more like I, I spend a lot of my time crafting and and you're know, working on my projects. This is where you kind of get to shine here. Like this is the I, I made this thing and, and the making of it made it magical. Uh, I've perfected my craft and, and I've so perfected it that it that it creates these objects which, you know, contain magic in them. Or you could also consider it from the angle of like, they know magic that they work as they craft. They sing songs of magic. The techniques they use, like the very way of hammering something, of crafting something, the tools that they have, have significance, have power. And and it's it's the fact that they know how to put it all together and they've worked at it for so long um, that, uh, you know, that they're able to create magic items with it. And so for this one, I'd, mm-hmm. I'd like pick a style of crafting and, and a specific like object or something that a lot of the powers that I have would be, would be framed around, you know, so that it's like they're, they're working towards, uh, you know, just producing rings or, uh, you know, maybe it's kind of fabric or something like that. And just finding ways to get creative about reflavoring abilities, magic items, spell effects, that kind of thing. Most definitely. Um, uh, next up on the list is also a popular one here, because uh, this is the heart of adventuring. But you, you want to yeah. be you want to be Indiana Jones, you want to be Laura Croft, but a little bit different wrinkle, but a relic hunter. Like yeah. you know that those items are out there, and you just craft the thing you need to get to those items. Like like uh, I like this because it's more of a you're a survive you're kind of a survivalist mm-hmm. uh, in that. You craft the the objects and armor and things you need to survive the world to get your hands on that delicious loot, uh, right. yes. Because you read about it, you know. Because yep. you, you that's what you do. You know about these things, these things that have been crafted. You craft things now, right? <laughs> like it's it's a nice it's it's a nice continuing uh, of the uh, of the hobby. Yeah, yeah. It, it, the the relic hunter like really leans into baseline D and D, right? Like 
Baseline mm-hmm. D&D says magic items are rare. They are objects of the past. They are priceless. Literally, you can't sell them or buy them. Uh, <laughs> you know, that they, they represent the, the pinnacle of achievement of a fallen age. And we here in this meager fifth era have no means of crafting our own magic items except for these enterprising individuals known as artificers who know how to make some things right and so like it works it fits you don't have to change any of the lore that emerges from the rules of the game you just Mm -hmm. lean into it and like yeah i'm an i'm an artificer i know how to make magic items i know how to imbue them with magic power give them to others temporary whatever and like i'm on the hunt for more i want to know how did they make a staff of power how is a vorpal sword created like Mm -hmm. you know you know who forged the axe of the dwarvish lords like they are out there to hunt down and and find these lost objects of power from another age. And like it comes baked in with its own motivations, its own goals, you know, from level one, what it is you're going to be doing. I uh, just I really like it as a, uh, a character concept. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Uh, it, it, it's it's kind of all around. Uh, you're taking care of it at pretty much any <laughs> level. Um, now the last one is one of my favorites. Uh, I've made a character very much like this. I haven't got to play them yet, but really want to, but the, uh, the, the oddball. Yeah. The weirdo. What, what do the you anachronistic think oddball. I think that there's a certain kind of game where playing someone from the future or another genre is appropriate. I, th- I, I love mm-hmm. a good game of very silly dungeons and dragons where, yeah. There's a sort of like playfulness and and kitchen kitchen sink feel that uh, that you can just relax with. You're not trying to emulate one standard genre or or consistent tone. You just kind of go with the flow of it. And like it's I've I've had games where you know <laughs> someone showed up with like a 20s era pulp inventor type as a character that they like to play in this otherwise like sword and sorcery uh sort of genre and it's like well what's the rationale with like i don't know they've ran into some sort of weird science thing and ended up here like i don't, I don't need that much uh just a fig leaf mm-hmm. of of fictional plausibility uh to get here and like artificer really works for that kind of concept you say like oh i i'm a star wars character that ended up in a D game or a star trek mm-hmm. character that ended up in a D game that kind of thing like i said yeah, it's not for every group. <laughs> You've got to be careful mm-hmm. with how you present it. But there are some games of D&D where that, is, that really works and can be very enjoyable. And, like, it, it fits with Artificer, right? Like, it, it, it fits. Oh, <laughs> oh totally. Uh, transporter accidents? Who knows where they right. transport you to? Slingshot <laughs> around the wrong sun? Who knows right. what sun you come back to, right? <laughs> like, you end up in a spell jammer game. The character I made, I've talked about this before in other venues and everything. So maybe you've heard of maybe a listener out there have heard about it. But like I I rolled up and made and did a background for Buzz Aldrin uh-huh. as an artificer that a necromancer came to what is now Earth after everything's gone and found a memorial to this great individual. This necromancer is looking for champions. So he does a true resurrection on Buzz Aldrin. Nice. And now you have this guy Very who fun. has knowledge of physics and, and arrow and, and uh, uh, I think he has like a, a astronomical engineering or something like that. Aerodynamics uh-huh. engineering uh degrees like he has multiple degrees and it's like yeah he would be like well i mean i know how to make some of this stuff sure but yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like that's that's who i made and uh that was the older artificer that got the giant eagle because it made sense but, right um, yeah it made sense for the for that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well you know he yeah. saying the eagle has landed just kind of fits with a character named buzz Aldrin. <laughs> I'm sure, certainly. Yeah, I, I, you know, I've had similar. I've the, you know, I've had one where it's like, this is the rocketeer. Like they just have, they have a rocket pack mm-hmm. and some pistols and otherwise they're just a two fisted, uh, you know, pulp adventurer. It, it's fine. It, it yeah. works for some groups, right? Like I, 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 I like it because the artificer is already a bit science fantasy. It's, it's already an intrusion yeah. in the fantasy genre, especially like the arcane science Eberron artificer. It's already a bit mm-hmm. of like, steampunky technology focused sort of archetype into what's otherwise pure fantasy pseudo medieval, you know, whatever. So like just taking it a step further and going like, no, they're actually like, those are Ray guns. <laughs> like this, this is, 
mm-hmm. science fiction equipment in here because screw it. It's a pretend game and the mixing and blending of genres is um, part of the fun, part of what uh, yeah. keeps it fresh, makes it interesting. Yeah, so throw in that mad scientist there and just see what happens. <laughs> see what happens. <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, uh, I, I will say this. Uh, you don't have to wait to see what happens if you click like and subscribe and click that bell because you're going to get notifications. And also check the description and the comments for that link to our uh, mailing list. Uh, you're going to want to be on the other end of those uh, those uh, emails. Trust me. Uh, big, exciting stuff happening very, very soon. Mm-hmm.